If you're not yet using version control for your projects, it's time to start. Do it! So what's it good for? Well, it provides a really clear history of changes for issue tracking, enables experimentation through branching, and ensures robust disaster recovery and release management. Let's think back for a moment. I'm sure everyone has heard of the Toy Story 2 disaster. During development of the second Toy Story movie, someone accidentally deleted some files that practically removed 80% of the movie. And this is where version control becomes useful even outside of game development. It's pretty much a way to store your files into a cloud so that data can be easily restored, but its functionality doesn't stop there. Maybe you're working in a team and you need to effectively pass data along to each other. Well, version control allows you to do that. You make your change, your team member pulls it in within seconds. It's so easy. And even more than that, let's say you start working on something. Things are going well until they're not. Files get deleted, game gets destroyed. You can simply scrap the branch and revert to an old version. Game saved, and you're gonna immediately be the hero of the team. If you're not yet using version control for your projects, now is the time to start. Today, I'm gonna give you guys the simplest way to set up version control for your games that I use whenever I start a new project. Let's begin. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to create an account on GitHub. Then, depending on whichever operating system you're running, either Windows or Mac, you'll want to install the GitHub desktop browser. After you've opened the GitHub browser and you have logged in, you can either create a repository through here, but I'm going to do it inside of the web application. So to create a new repository, just go to the main GitHub page, click new, and create the repository name here. Feel free to add your own description if you want, and set these privacy settings how you'd like. You also want to add a git ignore, specifically the Unity one. After that, we can click Create Repository. Now, back inside of our GitHub desktop app, we can actually clone this repository now. So, at the top left, we'll create Add, Clone Repository, and find the one that you just created. Once you've found the repository, save it into a file or location that makes sense for you. Once you've done that, you can click Clone. Now, if we navigate to the folder where the uh, GitHub repository exists in, we can actually see a git ignore here, which is created from the Unity git ignore. You can open it up in the notepad file, just to look at. But as you can see, it's got a lot of preset data here, which is essentially addressables or meta files that the git files can ignore. Now, inside of the Unity hub, we'll create a new project here, and where we save it, we'll save it in a location close to the original folder of the uh, repository. After that, you can hit create project and wait for it to boot up. Once Unity has booted up, the first thing that we actually want to do is just close it because the main thing is just loading all the assets initially. Next, what we want to do is we want to find inside of our folders where the our Unity project is sitting. So I've called it version control project. And what I'll do here is all of the assets inside of it, which belongs to Unity, I'm actually just going to cut them out and I'm going to place them inside of the folder that contains our Git project. So enter. Once that's uh, set up, if we go back into GitHub, we'll actually see a handful of new changes. Now these changes all belong to the Unity project. Now, the thing is, if we go into our Unity Hub here, uh, the new project that we just added will no longer be found, which is fine. So we'll just remove the project from the list and we'll add the project back in from the, uh, from the GitHub repository. Once we've done that, we can immediately open up the project. And now we can actually start working on the project itself. Now, the first thing that we'll do is create a new branch. So the way that we do that is opening up GitHub, we can commit the initial files here. So bottom left, create a summary. That's the only thing that's required. So we'll just say Unity setup. You can add a description if you'd like to be a bit more thorough with exactly what you've changed. But the main thing here is to commit to main. And at the top, you wanna to push that up as well. Once that's been pushed up, anyone who uh, has access to this repository will be able to pull that in immediately. Now, let's create a new branch here. And we'll call the branch UI Setup. Now, now we're in a completely new branch based off of the main branch. 
and we can start working inside of it. So if we open up our Unity project again, let's add in a random 2D object here and we'll just add in a circle. And if we hit save here and open up the GitHub project, we'll see we've got two new changes here. And just to show you what this does exactly, we can just say circle, commit this and push it up again. So for as long as we're on this branch, inside of our Unity project, we'll have this circle. But if we were to move back to the main branch, reload the Unity scene, that circle is gonna be gone. So say we wanna add the sprite into the main game now, we can open up the branches folder, click on choose a branch to merge into main, click UI setup and create a merge commit. Now, if we just push that up again, open up the Unity scene, once again, reload it. Now we'll have the circle inside the main folder. So it's honestly that simple. So if we go back into UI setup now and say we start working on, we'll add in a new sprite here and this one will be another circle, but we'll make it red and we'll just change the position a little bit as well. And once again, we save the scene We'll have the new files here. And if you decide, you know what? I actually kind of don't want the red circle anymore. You can simply just discard the changes made to that scene. And you again, reload it, gone. So it's that simple guys. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. Like I said, if you're not using version control, it's extremely useful. Um, and no matter what part of sort of software development you get into, it's going to be a requirement. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.